M. Calder. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for the opportunity to rise and speak on this, the third reading of the Sentencing and Parole Bill. The previous speaker made a valid point. We need to address the drivers of climb, and that is exactly what John Key's principled and pragmatic national-led government is doing. We are looking at ways to counter, to prevent and reduce offending in the first place. This is a work in progress. This bill, this bill is designed to protect the public from repeat serious violent offenders. Offenders who have ignored verbal and written warnings of the consequence of their violence and shown a cavalier disregard for the rights of others. A prisoner on remand and once sentence is held under the care of the Department of Corrections. The facilities operated by the Corrections Service have four main roles. To, to deter a potential offender from offending, to punish a convicted offender, to protect the public from a convicted offender and to rehabilitate a convicted offender. Let's look at rehabilitation. Drug and alcohol dependency is a problem for many prisoners and often a causative factor in their offending. We have doubled the amount of drug and rehabilitation places available from 500 to 1,000 and aim to increase the number of places further in the future when possible. We are also committed to rehabilitation through training programs which improve inmate skills. Spring Hills is an impressive correctional facility designed so that prisoners in the highest security cells can view the medium and low security cells and prison workshops from where they base. So in other words, there is a path to rehabilitation clearly visible should a prisoner choose to take it. All the staff I met there impressed me with their professionalism and passion for rehabilitation through prisoner education. Prisoners assessed as suitable have a chance of training in carpentry, metal work, catering and farm work. Prior to their final release, with the support of surrounding businesses, some prisoners may undertake day release to work programs. The aim at Spring Hill is ultimately to offer 60% of prisoners engaged in, in prison there, in, to offer them 60% of those prisoners to be able to take part in those rehabilitation programs. The day after my visit, corrections officer Jason Palmer was injured in the course of his duties and later died. His funeral was held yesterday. I offer my deepest sympathy to his family who have lost a beloved husband, father, son and brother, and the Spring Hill staff who have lost a friend and a valued team member. The government announced yet another rehabilitation initiative in this budget. Fori Oranga Aki, which my colleague referred to earlier, will help cut reoffending among Maori. Fori Oranga Aki is a Kaupapa Maori reintegration unit outside the wire, where the focus will be on prisoners gaining employment securing suitable accommodation and improving family and wider social relationships. As well as offering rehabilitation, a correctional facility should deter, punish a convicted offender and protect the public. As a member of the Law and Order Select Committee, I have visited New Plymouth, Auckland Central Remand Prison, Spring Hills and Rimataka. I would have no wish to spend a protracted period of time in any of them. Sadly, a number of our citizenry a prison must of some 8,500 people are not deterred. The prison muster continues to grow. With a rising population, some increase in muster is inevitable. But this government is not complacent. And we are seeking ways and new ideas to reduce it. Seeking ways and new ideas to reduce it, Mr Speaker, in stark contrast to the late unlamented lackadaisical Labour administration which had no answers, where legislative lassitude and lethargy reign supreme. Their caucus, riven with fear, loathing and mistrust, careered between querulous cavilling and contented catatonia. New ideas were as rare as a bikini on an Eskimo, as unknown as Vaseline on the hands of a trapeze artist, as scarce as a tsunami in the Sahara. Stark contrast to this government, Mr Speaker, John Key's national-led, principled, pragmatic government is determined to explore every avenue to rehabilitate, every avenue to deter, but also to punish the persistent, repeat, serious offender and protect the public from their depredations.
the sentencing and parole reform bill is part of this wide range of our initiatives. Mr Speaker, I commend this bill to the House. Members, the